All right, guys, I am super stoked for tonight. This is our usual inside the trader's mind, okay? But it's just a little bit different because if you registered for it, well done. <laughs> um, the reason for that registration was one for the recording because I don't think this is gonna go on my YouTube and it's a very important call. And secondly, there is a worksheet that you get. And so it's just easier for me to send it to you, okay? You're not gonna be spammed or anything like that. It's just, I just needed to send it to you and this was just the easiest way instead of getting a million inboxes saying, hey, can I get that? Okay, so if you are watching the replay, then just message me if you don't somehow get the replay <laughs> or the worksheet. All right, so for those that don't know me, my name is SJ. Um, I usually have my little sidekick with me, Mike Miles, but the boy must be sleeping, which is so fine because it is like four fucking a.m. over there. So anyway, <laughs> um, if you don't know who I am, I'm SJ, Trade House Australia. I've been trading for six and a half years, almost seven. Um, Mike has been in the game longer than me. He's been a mentor for me. Pretty much the whole time okay um, my background varies from business to sales to psychology psychology being my passion and that's what I really love helping bring to the trading space as well so my mission has always been to help people transform for the better trading being my vehicle to do so who can resonate with that okay now a couple of housekeeping things I am really chatty with you guys right I want you guys blowing up the chat um, and we do this thing around here called Blue Wolf. All right, I'm just gonna put it in right here. Blue Wolf, I got it wrong because we were fucking say the same thing. I don't even know what it is anymore. What is it, Blue Wolf or Blue Wolf? I don't even fucking know, but someone correct me if I'm wrong. I should know because it's the charity I support. But on behalf of Trade House Australia, every single time you guys have a breakthrough on one of our calls. Now breakthrough being like, a mind blown moment, an aha moment, something's just, the pennies just dropped, okay? I need you to put that hashtag in the chat for me, okay? Because what that signifies to me is a 10 USD dollar donation on behalf of myself and Trade House Australia. And so far this year, we're up to over just over 60,000 USD in donations. And the charity that we're supporting at the moment is to do with child and women sex trafficking in India. Okay, so it's a really important charity for me. Um, so your breakthroughs are really important for that single reason, all right? So go crazy in the chat, all right? Go crazy in the chat. So what else can I tell you? Stay to the end. I am gonna try and keep this within the hour, all right? I know it is late, I know it is early, depending on where you are. Towards the end of it, I am going to drop the worksheet in the chat, okay? So that's where you're going to get it. And the, in, the, the implementation on that worksheet is where you're going to have a lot of breakthroughs just alone, okay? So what I love helping people with um, is obviously learning to trade via our education, helping people transform their beliefs about trading, and helping people psychologically you know, transform their beliefs, thoughts, feelings, all that type of stuff, okay? And that is what we're speaking to tonight, right? I fucking love trading for what it's done for me. All right, it's been the most phenomenal industry. It's allowed me to do so many things, all right? So if you're new, I don't care if you're like, drop in the chat for me, how long have you been trading for? Or if you haven't been trading, say that. Just be like, I haven't gotten started yet, all right? Drop it in the chat for me. I don't care if it's one year, 10 year, two months, two days, whatever. Newbie, 12 months, still doing bounce back, epic. Yet to start six months since 2020, no experience, nine months, beautiful. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Now, I want people to thrive when trading, and I I love it when they thrive because of what they learn on the journey of trading, all right? And we all know that money is the byproduct of who you become in the process. Okay, so these calls are typically, we run them every Wednesday night, right? I've been doing this since 2017. These calls are typically called inside the trader's mind, and I use the simple metaphor of inside the trader's mind to emphasize what is meant by the behavioral side of trading, okay? Or if we wanna call it our inner game, okay? So in this context, it's, sorry, my phone's talking to me. Um, in this context, it's, it is the unseen, it is the intangible aspects of trading, such as temperament, mindset, emotions, and ego. 
um, and what I like to call the human operating system, right? So it's your inner game. It's the underlying foundation of every single thing that you do in trading. So you need a strong inner game that supports the strong outer game. Are you guys with me? Okay, you with me? Good. So the outer game, I guess, is 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 being more than, you know, that's the tangible aspects of trading that, that you would see, okay? Successful trading requires a strong outer and a strong inner game, okay? But if your outer is weak, it's because of your inner, okay? So I need you guys to get that right. The outer game will do the rest for you as long as you keep the inner game in check. Okay, neglect it, the outer game will fall apart. Okay, now what I know in my history of mentoring and coaching and trading, all traders start out with the intentions, um, you know, with, with, with really good intentions, okay? But then their focus becomes misdirected, okay? And their focus then becomes on too much, uh, too much time is spent achieving the short-term goals, right? Or projecting themselves um, and not enough focus spent on looking at the process of trading and reflecting at that. Okay, I want you to write in the chat. If you've been in the game longer, then don't write your answer now because your answer now is not going to be the first initial knee-jerk reaction. Why? Why did you start trading? Drop it in the chat. What, what lured you into trading? This is really important to know this. What lured you in? To make more money. Thank you, Reese. Extra money, no idea. <laughs> Not working with someone, financial freedom. Freedom, possibility, something new, extra money, tired of poverty, money and freedom. Okay, guys, why do most people lose money? Why do they fail at trading? Why do they quit? Write that for me in the chat. But why do they give up? Rushing to the goal doesn't make money straight away, instant gratification, yeah, too hungry, attached to the outcome. Amazing. Who here has seen The Matrix? Tiff, get the fuck out. Have you not seen The Matrix? Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, sis, we're going to watch that. Now, when I first saw the movie The Matrix, I loved it, you know, not for the action, but for the metaphor. Right, you know, and I, I recently watched it again, and I discovered that I actually didn't remember a lot of the details about the movie, just the metaphor of the movie. Okay, and the metaphor suggests that we're all programmed. Okay, and we live in a world of illusion shaped by our programming, and at some level, we seem to know that yes or yes. Okay, and we seem to know that there is something better. Okay, so at, at this point, knowing, knowing this, you have a choice, right? You either take the blue pill and go back to your comfortable sleep when nothing changes. Okay, in this case, it means you get off this call tonight or in the morning, wherever you are, and you do nothing, you change nothing, right? You've just invested your time, but you're not going to integrate any of the information. You're not going to implement anything. Or you take the red pill, as Morpheus says in the movie, see how deep the rabbit hole goes, okay? So my suggestion here is listen to what I'm saying on this call tonight. Get off this call, go and integrate it. Take what fits, leave what doesn't, okay? Because we really are so programmed by our beliefs, which we get from society, parents, schooling, friends, media, okay? We believe what we believe and that tends to shape our reality. So trading, guys, it's just a fucking numbers game. I also swear a lot, so if you don't like swearing, sauce. So. Trading is a numbers game, but it's also a mental game. It's a spiritual game, okay? And if you're in my group, you'll know that I'll say chart work is easy as piss, right? Trading is not easy to do, but becoming a trader is easy, right? Chart work is easy. Anyone, I can teach a kindergarten kid how to read a chart, okay? And the reason why becoming a trader is so easy is because there's absolutely nothing standing in the way of anyone opening up a, a trading account, right? I believe chart work is easy, but who you need to become isn't easy. And in my opinion, that's why traders don't make it. They're not willing 
to unbecome everything they are in order to become who they need to be to survive in an industry like this. Okay, now I love the premise of the movie The Matrix because The Matrix is so much more real than what people realize. Okay, so we shape our entire world, our thoughts and our beliefs. We shape that, okay, this is The Matrix and to change that, you gotta take the red pill. You take the blue pill, then the story ends, right? You wake up in your bed and you believe whatever it is that you wanna believe, okay? You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. That's why we run these calls. Okay, so when you take that, that metaphorical red pill, you learn that the world is shaped by your beliefs and you open up an amazing fucking world to different possibility because you're no longer a victim to it. Okay, you're free to transform yourself by releasing the non-useful, non-useful, is that a word? I don't know. The nonsense beliefs and adapting new ones. Okay, so my intention for tonight's call is to be that red pill. If you're willing to go down the rabbit hole, write it in the fucking chat. Okay, if you want to go down the red, the red pill hole, <laughs> if you want to go down the rabbit hole, you must examine your beliefs. You would have heard me say time and time and time again, you don't trade the markets, you trade your beliefs about the markets. And if your beliefs are not useful, you're in big fucking trouble. Okay, so as you, as you travel down the rabbit hole, you're going to meet parts of yourself. And each part of yourself has a different set of beliefs, all in which you must question. Did I choose this belief or was it opposed on me from an external whatever? Influence. Okay, now I've spent way too much longer than I wanted to spend talking about the matrix, but <laughs> anyway, you get the idea of what this call is about. So in trading, guys, we must remember that this is a skill just like any other. It takes years to grasp. And what happens is most people come in thinking that, you know, they'll give it six months, they'll give it, you know, a year, and then they can get their Lambo, right? It takes a, a significant amount of time, several years, guys, and a deep commitment to become the trader that is consistently profitable, that is successful. Okay, but you must understand also that you're responsible for the results you get. Not the mentor, not the, not the go live, you. Okay, question for you. Have you ever blamed someone else for your poor trading? Like drop a one in the chat. Like a, qu a better question would be, if, you have, if you've ever taken a signal from an educator and they were wrong, did you blame them? You blame them? I think we all have. <laughs> but I encourage you to try that it wasn't my fault next time. Next time you lose money and see how far that's get, that gets you. Okay? Your results will always be traced back to you. Okay? Who's 100% fully committed to that? Of owning your results? Okay, so I've got my notes over here so I don't fall off the bandwagon with the matrix again. There's three pillars to trading psych. Okay, so if I'm a psychologist in the past, past life, right? This is why I love this shit. So there's three pillars to trading psych. We've got our emotional development. Okay, this is what most trading mentors speak to, right? They speak to a very surface level of you need to control your emotions, you need to manage your emotions, okay? We've all fucking said that at some point. The next one is um, our cognitive development, right? This is the ability to better integrate emotion and logic to make decisions, okay? We've then got our spiritual development. And guys, I'm not fucking talking about religion, okay? We can define spirituality as the, as the, as the domain of the sacred, Okay, what I, what I mean by that is what makes something sacred is that there is a source of meaning and purpose above and beyond our personal wants, needs, desires, interests. Okay, so how we conceive the spiritual domain is going to be the thing that helps 
how we conceptualize and experience every single thing that we do in life. Right? So in this in this context, I'm speaking to the to the part of spiritual spirituality that reflects our core ways of making a meaning in this world. Right? So the three parts. Within those three parts, there's then three elements within ourselves that we have to engage in to become a successful trader. Right? We've got our left brain awareness. And our, our, our left brain is the part, like I just said, that, that handles the cognitive function. It deals with the logic, okay? This is when we're usually, like, we're, we're starting to learn something new, okay? In trading, this would mean executing our trading plan. It would be entering trades, calculating risk, analyzing um, charts, right? Analyzing, like, our journals, refining our strategy. This is the main thing that a trader focuses on, Okay? And then we've got the right side, which has been shown to be responsible for our processing of emotions and intuition and all that type of stuff. Okay, so in other words, this is where the psychology of trading happens, right? You could have the most profitable trading strategy in the world, but if you don't know how to manage yourself, manage your emotions, then you're not going to be able to execute them successfully. Okay. And, and traders who are not aware of their emotions will do things like FOMO, they'll revenge trade, they'll you know, over leverage, risk too much, right? They'll go on this downward spiral of thinking and when they go on losing streaks, okay? But when traders manage the emotional aspect of trading, that's when they become profitable. So I guess how, how these two tie together into spirituality is through whole being awareness, right? Self-awareness. And this is something that very few people talk about in trading. I don't see people on social media, on Instagram, on my For You page talking about this. I don't see it. That's why we're talking about it tonight. Right? All of this awareness combines the function of of the two sides of our brains and the awareness of the third element being the spiritual side of trading. So without the spirituality, it's really fucking hard to find meaning in our lives in trading. When you make money, you know why I'm talking to this? Because I've made over half a million dollars this year and I've had the most moments of what the fuck am I doing with this money moments. I've never had these types of thoughts when I didn't have money, guys. It came when I had money. So without the spirituality side of it, it's so hard to find meaning, right? So in a more practical sense, in, in a more practical term, right? It's about getting in touch with who you are at a core level and figuring out what the fuck brings you joy. Okay, and like I said, I'm not talking about religion here. So I'm going to invite you <laughs> to leave any of your little preconceived ideas about spirituality on your side of the Zoom, right? I'm not, <laughs> you keep them over there. I'm not bringing that here. Okay, so the, the, the impact of spirituality on training, uh, of trading may not be apparent for you right now, but I'll give you some examples of different ways that it matters more than your trading strategy, more than your trading psych. Okay, like, like the topic of spirituality usually comes up when a trader has become consistently profitable. That's when it comes up because before then you're too focused on the strategy. You're too focused on trying to get it right. Okay, but once you're free from the financial worry, you'll start asking things like this. What's next? Does this make me happy? Why, why are certain things outside of trading having such a big impact on my trading? Is there more to trading than just making money? What things do I actually like doing? Now that I have the time, what do I actually fucking like? How can I make a positive impact on the world? Okay, if a trader doesn't answer these questions, you're going to lose interest in it when you've got it. Why do you think I talk about having a why all the time? Guys, the bottom line here is that you either need to find meaning in the activity of trading itself 
or in the activities that trading will allow you to do. Okay, like an example is you may not think trading is the most funnest thing in the world, but maybe you love that trading provides you an income and a free time for you to do the things that's important to you. For me, that's coaching. It's, it's traveling, it's my family, it's, it's my future, it's setting that up. It's literally breaking free of the system. They're my motivating factors. Right? If you want to become successful long term in trading, you need to find out what's important to you while you're trading, while you're learning to trade. You got to figure that out. And I should I should actually premise here that this is not just trading related. This is anything that you're doing to make money. Exactly, Eliza. It's not just trading. People think they have trading problems. It's fucking life problems. <laughs> it's not just trading, right? I've been on this, what else is there journey for about 18 months. I've spoken to Mike about it a million times. And I, and I guess, and it's like who here literally thought before, before I had just said all those things, how does spirituality relate to trading? Who thought that? Who, who thought, here we fucking go. Here's the woo woo. Surely someone did, because I know I did. I know I did. Right, so this whole class tonight was inspired from two very different text messages that I received in one day. And they're both on the call tonight, so thank you. <laughs> and the questions were, hey, hope you're well. So if I join your thing, will I make money or will I just be shown how to? And the second one was from a really good friend of mine. What do you think sets apart a trader like yourself and one that gives up? This woman had never even asked me about trading before. Didn't even, hadn't even seen a chart yet ask me that. And I said, thank you for asking that as your very first trading question. Do you see the difference? Those two questions right there. Someone who's driven by money to someone, what's the difference between someone who succeeds and someone who doesn't? Very powerful questions. If you guys want your trading to go next level, you need to ask better questions. Not just, oh, I don't understand liquidity. Ask better questions. I say that lovingly. If you actually don't know what that means, please ask. <laughs> okay, so I th when, when I think of traits of a successful trader, right, and I don't think this is limited to a successful trader, this goes for everything. Self-led, right? They don't need anyone to check in on them because they check in on you and they ask questions when they need. They show up, right? If you need to be constantly babysat as a trader, you're never going to make it. So that also rolls into personal independence. You will never ask the question, how do I stay motivated? If you have personal independence. And I'm really grateful none of my traders ask me that. None of them do. Mental toughness, right? You're going to have losing streaks. Mental toughness, toughness, toughness will help you persevere. Personal accountability and responsibility. Vision, right? Humility. Humility, big one. You need a love of trading as well because you have to enjoy this, otherwise you won't see it through, okay? Most traders, successful traders that I'm friends with, they have developed a real passion for it. You know, there's, there's, there's not much chance of becoming a successful trader if you don't have a strong desire and passion for it, okay? Now, that doesn't mean I wake up fucking thrilled to get on the charts. No, I'm neutral now. I'm neutral about it. I'm like, it's part of my identity, it's part of my routine. That's what you've got to like, start discovering is the identity. Okay, I do my thing, but I genuinely enjoy trading because of the growth and growth being one of my highest values. This ticks that box, right? Financial stability. People get into trading 
to become financially stable. Okay, but in my experience of having a job and an income while learning to trade, it made my life so much easier. Okay, it helps you become who you need to be because your focus isn't on making money right away. You become process orientated. Okay, and I guess another really big thing is being able to accept mistakes. And I guess that can fall under humility as well. Guys, it's acceptable to make a mistake, but it's never acceptable in trading. It's never acceptable in trading to, to, to not learn why or how you made it. Hence the journal. It's okay to make them, but you've got to understand why. Okay. So when we, when we think of trading, we think of money, right? Making money and making lots of it. Not so much a connection to spirituality, yes or yes. Okay. And it's precisely this dichotomy that makes trading, this trading world, a fascinating place to fucking explore. Okay. Because finance is so about profit and loss. Investing is profit and loss. Business is profit and loss. Okay with outcomes that are tangibly measured in, you know, literal dollars and cents. Okay, and I've seen over the years that many of the problems that traders and investors have are not just emotional or cognitive, guys, but they're part and parcel of an alienation from spirituality and an alienation of their why, of why they're doing it. And that brings me back to the text, guys. What do you think separates a trader like yourself from one that quits, right? Every single trader, sooner or later, begins to realize that there is more to trading than just reading a chart. And if you've been trading for a while, especially if you're in the trade house group, then you'll realize that many of the problems that you have as a trader are actually derived from your own individuality, okay? And the problems are not trading problems, they're human problems. And the incredible thing about trading is that it brings you into this head-on confrontation with who you are the deep down real you if you haven't experienced that yet you're not in the game long enough okay but it's at that point of confrontation that there's you know three or so different choices that you can fucking make you can try for a bit then give up you can seek to overcome your own human nature through introspection okay you can seek help from someone who can help you. <laughs> Hopefully you choose the second two. Hopefully you choose the second two. You don't give up and quit. I, I was just on a one-on-one -on -one before and I said, to, I said to him that people that quit trading never stop thinking about it. Who he has quit and you couldn't stop thinking about it. Once you know what you know, you don't fucking forget it. You are always thinking about it. Quitting doesn't get you anywhere faster, guys. Think about that. So there's many problems that plague a trader. Rory, I just saw your name. Awesome to see you. There's so many problems that come with being a trader. Okay, and some of these problems can be fairly easily identified. You may be aware of some of them. You probably know that you've got them or you don't. You may have experienced many of these. And it's things like, um, fear, feelings of inadequacy, right? Lack of courage, lack of self-confidence, uh, selfishness, greed, pride, vanity, dishonesty, lying, you know, lack of wisdom or need for wisdom. Um, questions about the morality of trading. I get, I get that quite a bit, actually. You know, if I'm winning, then someone else is losing. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to life. <laughs> Okay, need for need, needing to be right. An identity crisis. That's where I've been. <laughs> okay, the last one is what's led me here today, right? All of, all of the above are just symptoms that run deeper in your mind. Okay, they're there. Everyone's got them. And these problems, as well as many others, are the manifestations of spiritual problems that you're just probably not consciously aware of. Okay, but they're in your mind, they're deep, they're residing deep in your memory. You may have pushed them, squashed them into the little crannies and cracks of your mind, right? But they are problems that come from bad things that's happened to you. 
even to go back to your mother's womb, right? They are problems that stem from events that you want to forget, right? They are problems that's caused by real or, you know, perceived mistreatment. All of your hang-ups and issues are because of whatever's happened to you in the past. You know, a classmate called you something, teasing you, right? Abuse, physical, emotionally, verbal, okay? Whatever it is, you've hidden it because it hurt. So when you think about that, who you are and what you are from your own point of view is your self-image, okay? That has been tainted by those events, those experiences, and you've hidden them. And they're in the deepest parts of your mind and they will plague you as a traitor until you fucking excavate them out and confront them and deal with them. And that's the beautiful thing about trading. It's gonna expose all of that. If it hasn't, I'm gonna say it again, you haven't been in the game long enough. Who here is experiencing or has experienced a little bit of what I'm talking about? Right? Guys, self-awareness is the ability to see yourself and objectively through reflection and introspection. Okay, so whilst we're all on this call, whilst we get off this call and go about our day, whilst we all think we know ourselves, the lens in which we see ourselves is warped, it's distorted. Okay, and sometimes we see ourselves as we would like to see ourselves. Other times we see ourselves in terms of our fears and desires, but rarely do we see ourselves with clarity. Okay, so there's levels to this shit, guys. There is levels. I don't even know how many. Fucking seven, maybe. We'll see how we go when I verbally vomit the money. <laughs> there's levels, right? From where you hear about trading to when you become successful in trading, right? Level one, this is where you first hear about trading. You're seeing people making money. You're seeing people have the freedom you desire. And you decide you want that too, right? Level two. With all of that curiosity, you find a way to get started. Level three, this is where the emergence of ego starts to show, right? As you, as you really, you know, hone in on your trading abilities, you become really confident, maybe a bit cocky, right? You start telling people how profitable you are, <laughs> right? You talk about it with pride and there's nothing wrong with that until you cross the line and it starts to feed your ego. Okay, for some, some people get addicted to praise and compliments, especially on social media. Okay, but for the most part of that, that's where overconfidence creeps in. And when the market fucking owns you, when it puts you on your ass and humbles you, you're crushed. Okay, and when that happens, most people give up. When people take losses, they crumble. For the true committed trader, they know that losses are just a business expense. Right? Losses are just a business expense. Who cares? Okay? But the ego itself will continue to grow as it thrives on fear and greed. It'll say things like, I cannot fail. I cannot miss out. I have to fucking win. I have to get in this trade. Oh, look, here's another trade. Boop, in, overtraded, lost. Right? That's where the ego is. Level four. This, this part is the never ending cycle between exploration and ego. Right? You start realizing that the market humbles the best of us, that we can never control the market. Right? That the market will decide on its own what it's going to do, no matter how perfect the setup is. Okay? And you slowly start to discern that you are not in control of the market, that you have been feeding your ego all along. And with that awareness, I guess we can say you've been fucking awakened, yeah? Right? Because the next level, level five, I think that's where we're at, this is where acceptance comes in. Right? You can never eliminate what you don't think you have. Let that land, guys. You can never eliminate... What did I say? You can never eliminate what you don't think you have. 
So because of that, you accept the presence of your egoic self, which is the false you that's been created in your mind, right? And you start to rein it in. And every time that you have thoughts or actions that are feeding it again, you immediately abandon that, those. You immediately abandon those thoughts and actions, right? You, you rein it back in, right? Level six, this is where the consistent practice comes in, okay? As you continue in your trading journey, it takes commitment for you to show up. And with that commitment comes a consistency, right? It takes consistent practice and discipline, not only to improve your trading skills, but also to keep your ego in check. Okay. And as that saying goes, that we always say, once you master self, then you will succeed. Okay. And I guess the, yeah, seven levels, the seven, right? Legacy and contribution. This is the stage I believe I'm at right now. I've been through all of them though. You can't, you can't cheat the system here. This is probably where Mike's at. 100% is where Mike's at. Any educator that you watch, this is probably where they're at. Okay, so I will speak on the behalf of them as well. This is the level where big money's made, but it's also the level where money doesn't matter all that much. Okay, because what we value most now is how to aid in the expansion of humanity's consciousness, of me helping you guys. That's actually what's filling my cup up. Okay. It's, it's how to use trading as a vehicle to fund what matters. Okay, hence the blue wolves that you guys put in the chat. You, you, you hashtag, I donate. Hence why we share this as, a, as an opportunity and think those who don't is selfish, right? <laughs> so I believe we all go through those stages with no shortcuts, right? They're my seven stages. All of those also illustrate how important the intangibles are because most of the time, a lot of us focus on the technicalities of trading and we completely sideline the emotions and the psychology involved, which I believe have the greatest impact on the results that you're seeking. Okay, so I believe that those seven stages, those seven levels, they're not just relevant to trading or in our financial freedom journey, right? It is equally applicable to all areas of our lives if we're working towards a greater purpose. Okay, so when we think about trading guys, let's face it, right? The markets are made up of nothing more than human beings seeking to satisfy their own needs and desires, right? We want to be truth about it that's what we're here for there's nothing wrong with that but you've got to remember every day why you're here why you're here so i guess to wrap up tonight before i i, I drop the worksheet in the chat that i want you guys to work through even send me your breakthroughs from it if you had none cool whatever okay but one thing guys I know you all watch the calls. I know you're all doing, doing the work, but here's the thing, Con consuming information is easy, right? What's not easy is integration, right? So in a world, in our world, I guess, in our world of personal development, entrepreneurship, whatever, People are rushing to learn all that they can and they're doing as much as they can as if it's a race. And they're wearing it, they're wearing their busy badge like it's a fucking accomplishment, like it's a big old badge of honor. Right? Many people are in a rush to become healed or the best they can be. Right? Some people are even rushing to become the best at what they do, right? To become so well known, an expert in the shortest amount of time possible so they can fucking add it to their IG bios. But what they fail to realize is, guys, this isn't a fucking race. This is you against you. And if you're treating this as a race, 
if you're comparing your journey to, oh, so-and-so has been in it longer than me um, or less than me and they know more, they're doing better, fucking stop that, right? If you're treating this as a race, if you're treating it as such, then you're not growing. What you're doing is you're actually contracting, okay? Because growth, guys, growth is about expansion. It, it Expansion requires embodiment, right? Embodiment requires integration, okay? So it's crucial that you guys create space to integrate what it is that you're learning. Otherwise, you're just a sponge. Some of you even call yourself a sponge. Just a sponge soaking up all the information. What are you fucking doing with that information? <laughs> right? You're just moving it from one plate to the other and wiping it around. Right? Only to find yourself drying up exactly where you first started. You're not integrating the information. So this is about who you're being every single mo in every single moment. It's the embodiment, right? This is about implementing what you learn as you learn it. This is about being the best possible version of you instead of just waiting for that label to claim as your status, as your little fucking trophy, right? This is about being present with who you want to be, what you have, where you are, what you know, right? This is about integration. So can we make Scott's honor, right? Let's get really honest with ourselves and where you're at right now. Are you in the habit of consuming information or are you truly devoted to integration? Where are you at? Transitioning to consumer. Wait, transitioning to consumer? I want you to be an integrator. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, wait a minute. Awesome. So guys, I'm going to drop... Anyone to link? Can you copy a link? Let me know if you get this. This is your homework. This is for you to get really clear where you're at, where you're going, why you want what you want, and why you maybe haven't seen the progress that you're seeking. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions? Oh, one in the chat. How do you go about changing beliefs? Okay. Sorry, I'm just reading the question. How do you go about changing beliefs? All right, so just a little quick lesson on this, right? The subconscious mind, guys, does not respond to logic. Okay. We all have beliefs about ourselves that we would like to change, right? Maybe, maybe you don't feel worthy of becoming a successful trader. Like you can say you're worthy and you don't have a problem. Yeah, I'm worthy of success. But in a bodily sense, you don't actually feel it, right? So maybe you don't feel worthy and you want to feel that you are, okay? Maybe you feel scarce with money and you desire to feel abundant with money okay maybe you don't feel loved and you want to fucking feel loved <laughs> okay simply telling yourself that you are these things is not going to change your beliefs this is why i'm not the biggest fan of affirmations you know everyone says stand in the mirror and say i am beautiful i am wealthy <laughs> i am a millionaire how's that fucking working out for you <laughs> Right? So simply telling yourself that you are the things that you want, 
it's not going to change your beliefs, right? A change of belief needs to happen at a subconscious level. So if your if your beliefs are shaped throughout your whole life, then they are shaped through everything that you consume, the people that you surround yourself with, the experiences, your background, whatever, right? Your beliefs are a felt experience. They aren't they aren't necessarily logical. Okay? So conscious thoughts can influence and inform beliefs, but they don't create them. Okay, so that's why, for example, you can logically know that you're worthy, yet not feel it. Okay, so in order for you to change your beliefs, you've got to go to the root. You need to go beyond the conscious mind into the subconscious mind. Okay, and the subconscious mind doesn't like to be made conscious. That's why it's called subconscious. Okay, and this is why the process of bringing your subconscious into your conscious awareness feels so hard. That's why change can be so difficult. It's so hard to change your beliefs. Okay? It's meant to be it's meant to be automatic and unconscious. Okay? It's, that's just how it is. So I guess then how do you connect to your subconscious mind? Okay? So so tools for that, you know, hypnotherapy um, different types of embodiment practices, creating daily habits that give you a pattern interrupt. That's one of my favorites. Um, you know, other somatic practices such as like breath work, things like that. Working with a therapist. Okay, many different things you can do, but just saying I am this is not going to change anything. This is where your identity comes in. How do you trade with no expectations in the market and lower your ego? What video or audio would you recommend to listen to that might help or habits that I could implement and change for the better? How do you trade with no expectations and lower your ego? Um, I think expect, if, you're tra- if you're process orientated, when it comes to expectations, the thing is with a trade, every single time you enter a trade, you know how much you can win and you know how much you can lose. It shouldn't be a surprise if you lose. Like you shouldn't be like, fuck, I lost 50. <laughs> like that should never be a thing, right? You should always know based upon your analysis of the trade and your risk management and risk calculations, how much you can win, how much you can lose. So to trade with no expectations is all about attachment right? Why do you care if you win or lose? We've got so many videos of this specific topic on my YouTube. Um, If you want to DM me on Insta, then I'll put my thing in the chat and we can either dive into this more personally. What's my Instagram? Or I can refer you to videos. Working. Yeah, I have, I'm a psych and I have my own psych. Like therapy shouldn't be frowned upon. I still didn't heal heal this fully. I see other people who don't do the results and make, yeah. Guys, the inner work, as much as I can preach, it's so important. There are billions out there, billionaires out there that haven't done any. But where this comes into a cop-out is you using that as an excuse to not do the work. You know, I can't do that because, you know, I've had this happen to me, (laughs) right? I don't mean to laugh then, but I just mean sometimes we can use our past as excuses to not do what's necessary. Like, like I said, billionaires are out there who had, wouldn't have not like no trauma healing, healing, no inner child stuff, no reflection. So big money can be made without the inner work for sure. But the people that I know who make shit tons of money guys, all have a purpose, they're all pretty well fulfilled. The people that make huge amounts of money, something else is at a cost in their life. They're probably very miserable inside. I'm talking about the gazillionaires. All right, do we have any other questions? Have we enjoyed tonight? Give me some love in the chat if we have enjoyed tonight. And you can also give constructive feedback because (laughs) self-awareness. I 
amazing amazing well this recording will be sent to you um can someone just confirm the worksheet opened and it's all fine johnny i am always here for guidance worksheet opened amazing guys i want you blowing up my inbox with that worksheet right if you haven't traded before ask yourself why ask yourself what's holding you back if you've quit ask yourself why find that spiritual side to this and connect deeper within it with this I can't believe I kept this under an hour go me <laughs> that's never a thing <laughs> All right, guys, Efren, thank you all so much. I appreciate all of your time. Feedback is always welcomed. If there's anything that you would like these calls to be on more specifically, then you just DM me topics and we discuss it on the night. All right, appreciate you all and I'll see you soon.